Hey, what's up you guys? It's Tyler from The Heritons, and we're back today with a brand new video. And if you're brand new to the channel, welcome. This is a series that I've been doing. It's called Breaking Down a Wedding Film. Essentially what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a wedding film that I just finished editing. In this case, we're doing Kate and Kevin's wedding, which we actually shot in Chicago this year. So it was a super awesome, unique wedding. And I'm gonna go through the edit. I'm gonna go shot by shot. I'm gonna break down my entire thought process behind the shots that I chose, why I chose them. I'm gonna go into the color grading. We'll talk about audio. We're just going to go through the entire edit from start to finish, and I'm just going to walk you through it, show you exactly what we have in here, all the things that have been done, and I think this is a really, really great way for you guys to learn how my brain works and kind of what I'm thinking through as I'm going through these edits. Um, and along the way, of course, I'll be sharing a little bit of behind the scenes and some of the how-tos and what was happening during the shots, all that good stuff. So this is a really great series. I really love doing these, so hopefully you guys will enjoy them too. Um, a few quick things before we jump in. I got a new mic. Uh, let me know how it sounds. Hopefully it sounds pretty good. Um, I think I've got it all kind of figured out and honed in, so it should sound pretty good. Um, okay, so as far as this wedding goes, I said Kate and Kevin, this was in Chicago, and this was a really, really hot day in Chicago for, for what it's worth. Um, but some interesting things to note is that this is one of the first weddings that we ever shot. We got a bunch of new gear uh, halfway through the year. So in this wedding, we got we were using the C100 Mark II, which is relatively new for us. Uh, a C100 Mark I is our B cam, and then a 5D Mark III as our C cam. So those are the main, uh, like, cameras you're gonna see and on top of that we also are using our a6300 which we've been using for a long time with the Zion crane as our gimbal setup but what's different about this wedding is this is the first wedding that we used um, a brand new lens on that setup we use the uh, Sony 16 to 35 f4 previously we had been using the Sony 16 millimeter 2.8 pancake lens so we went from a $200 prime little cheap lens to this lens which was fourteen hundred dollars um but that gives us the ability to have you know to be able to zoom in which is really nice and to have some really great looking shots so uh, i think this is a really great film i'm really proud of it and i'm excited to walk you through it oh and we also had the phantom 3 pro which uh we use for a few different shots during this whole thing so let's jump into it and we'll go over all all the things all right here we go so we're in Premiere Pro CC. This is 2018. I just recently updated. Um, let's first just kind of walk through how we have everything organized here. So as you can see, I am a very organized person when it comes to my files. Um, that's just sort of the way my brain works. Um, but we have an audio folder here with all of our different audio tracks. These are mostly just the soundtracks. Um, we have our footage folder. We have all of the different cameras broken down. You can see I already talked about those 5D3, 6300, the two C100s, and the Phantom. Um, so I do a same day edit for every single wedding. And if you're interested in how we do that, um, we have a free download for that. If you want to learn how we do a same day edit on the day of the wedding before we leave. Um, but that gets its own separate folder because then what I do is I do that on my laptop and then I import that, that all the, um, the timeline and all that stuff into this premiere project. So I have all that stuff there if I ever need to get to it. Uh, so that has its own folder. And then we have all of our sequences. So we have call sequences, which is basically the way that I uh, sort out all the footage. So if I open up one of these, you can see um, I have a couple of different ones here, but you can see I just break down all the footage um, into these little sections based on what is going on. So this is a better example. You can see I've got, you know, city B-roll, uh, reception details, you know, dress, steaming the dress, groom prep, all that kind of stuff. And this is just the way that I like to work in order to um, have all my clips organized. We have all that. We have our nested sequences, which is basically anytime I use the 6300, um, which is 4K, and I need to uh, warp stabilize it, I need to nest it in order for it to allow me to do that. Or if I have a slow motion clip that I want to stabilize, those all get uh, have to be nested before they can be warp stabilized. So as you can see here, I use warp stabilizer a lot. Uh, and then we have our sync sequences for the ceremony, parent dances, and toasts. And then down here we have the feature film, which is what we're looking at right here. So within the feature film, the way that I have everything laid out is for all of my films, I always have these two layers on top here and I always have them locked. Uh, this is my CinemaScope prop lines, which basically just gives me the aspect ratio that I want. 
and is the easiest way I've found to do that within the editing program. Um, I do have a separate um, export sequence that I use when I go to export things. It is at, it's not exporting the full 1920 by 1080. The bars are just there for editing, so I have an idea. And then we have the adjustment layer, which we'll go into what's in that. So, um, And then below that, we have uh, tracks uh, four, three and two, really I try and just use two and three are for B-roll and then video track one is where I put any video that is linked to audio that we're actually using in the film. And then all the way down here on audio tracks four and five is where I put the soundtrack, okay? So that's the basic layout, that's what we're looking at here. Um, so let's just jump into it and let's go through this whole thing. So, open with a drone shot. Not something I like to do all the time. I know it can be overdone. I think in this case it worked. I really wanted to set the scene that's in Chicago. And the reason I wanted to do that is because the couple, they live in downtown Chicago. They met in downtown Chicago. And they just really love Chicago. So it was something that was really important to them. And they even picked their wedding venue. And they picked a lot of the different things about the day based on how much they love Chicago. So I just wanted to open up with a really nice skyline shot of Chicago to really anchor that as an important element. Um, so we have this nice rising drone shot and we can hear the the music you know sort of swelling to go with that um so we're not even going to go very far we're going to jump right into it. okay so let's look at this drone shot um so let's see what i have on here so we have lumetri color turned on so this is before and after and then let's actually turn off the adjustment layer so we can see everything here so here's with just with the lut or with the, uh, sorry, with Lumetri Color. So let's see what we were doing over here. We have, um, we brought the temperature down, we upped the contrast like crazy, we dropped our blacks, and we added a bunch of sharpening, 20 on sharpening, okay? So all of those things combined with our adjustment layer. And I guess we should just go over this too. So on the adjustment layer, basically all I have on here is this uh, LUT that I've been using. This is the Cine Subtle Teal and Orange LUT. Um, I actually got these from a guy who I follow on YouTube. He uh, has the Travel Feels YouTube channel. So I'll link those down below where you can go buy the Cine LUT pack. I really, really enjoy them. I think they're great. And you get to support a YouTuber and you know a small creator. So this is perfect. So I have my LUT turned on here. I set the intensity to 50%. And that's pretty much all that I have in the um, adjustment layer. So just keep that in mind. Uh, and you can see that it's basically just, it's it's uh, it does a really good job in the shadows to kind of bring those down to mute them. And I just think it gives a really nice film look while also retaining really good skin tones. And I even though I know like the teal and orange thing can be kind of overdone, I think this one, again, is done very subtly and it's done very well that it gives it a nice cinematic look, keeping good skin tones and just kind of works really well for my cameras and the footage that I get. So I really like it. Okay, so that's our drone shot. We also scaled it up uh, to 120% uh, just in order to keep the framing more of the way I like it. Um, and yeah, so it ended up, I think it ended up looking really good. Again, here's a little before and here's after. So very cinematic. Two are caring as they're sharing life's hopes and fears. Okay, so we opened up as far as audio goes with a a reading from the ceremony, which isn't something that I always do, um, but I'm also adding a little bit of reverb because I just want it to feel very like ethereal and kind of match with the way the music is swelling and stuff like that. So if I take the all the effects off, it sounds like this. So this I captured just through they, you know, he had a microphone that he was speaking into. I recorded the audio from the mixing board with my. Um, Taskcam DR40. So I put a little multiband compressor to bring the levels up. If both derive pleasure from your presence. And then the reverb just to add a little bit more of a interest to the voice and to make it sound a little bit more, I don't know, ethereal. I thought it sounded cool. Okay, but let's look at the shots. So we're starting off with some, again, some more shots of Chicago. These are some B-roll shots. I actually shot almost all of these the next day. Um, luckily, our hotel was very close to where we went and did portraits, and we were right downtown. So um, I didn't have time on the day of, and I decided it would be better just to go and spend 20 minutes on another day just walking around with my camera getting these shots. So these are just some nice um, 
shots of the of the area in Chicago. This is a you know big famous building, so people Chicago people would recognize this. Just again to anchor us here and to really give us like that Chicago vibe. Marriage is togetherness. And then we go into this was their first look. This was on top of the hotel where they're getting ready. Again, more skyline. So all this stuff, you know, the big skyline shot, the few little skyline shots, and then are all kind of leading up to this. So so you know when you get to this, you feel very much like, oh, I know exactly where this is happening. If both derive pleasure from mere presence of each other, yet when parted, no jealousies restrict. And then just some really nice gimbal shots here. These are all again A6300. So I really wanted to start off with this, and um, what's something that's interesting about this, this is a fun fun fact, is that when we actually filmed the original first look, I wasn't recording. Uh, I accidentally, I had hit the record button right before it started thinking that that was starting the recording, and I actually stopped my recording. So from this, I actually had completely missed the like of, original, like real first look um, with my gimbal camera. Part of the reason is because the screens on the 6300 are really hard to see in the sun. And it was very bright and sunny, as you can see. Um, so what we had them do is I you know, I didn't panic. I didn't make a big deal about it. I didn't even tell them. They probably don't know un unless they watch this. Um, but I just said, all right, that was perfect. Let's do it one more time with the gimbal just so I can really get that approach shot and look, you know, what's really, really good. But what's nice is that I did have, so this was shot, Ash's shot from the side. She had the C100 with the 24 to 70. So she did have that shot, which is authentic. And then, you know, so this is technically, it was, it was faked, right? But it doesn't really matter. I had a couple other angles. They just didn't really work out. And I thought that doing it this way just was the best, most cohesive way to do it. And honestly, his reaction in real life wasn't much different than that, luckily. Um, so yeah. We just gotta, sometimes you just gotta roll with it. Don't panic and just, you just gotta make it work. Okay. So, so we went through this whole first look sequence. I really like this walking shot here. Again, anywhere where you see nested sequence means that I uh, put warp stabilizer on it. So for warp stabilizer, most of the time, I just kind of let it do the natural, like the settings that it comes with, unless I'm trying to have something that has no motion on it and then I'll use different settings. But all these you can see are just the normal warp stabilizer. And if I take it off, Marriage is freedom. you can see there's just a little bit of shake in there. It's not bad. It's just better Marriage is freedom. with the warp stabilizer on. If achievements mean more when they benefit too. And as one more note on the audio for this film, if you hear any sort of like hissing and stuff like that in the background, that's not from the recording that's not from bad levels or anything like that there were two massive like industrial actually four massive industrial fans that were running during the entire ceremony because again even though this was in september it was really really hot like it was in the 90s for whatever reason so yeah so they had these industrial fans that were running the whole time so there's really nothing i can do to get that completely out of the audio so if you hear that that's what that is and consideration is shown with each point of view. Okay, again, more Marriage walking shots of them, highlighting Chicago, like the skyline is prominent in these shots because that's something that's really important to them. Are combined with the joy that words can never fully define. So again, with these gimbal shots, you want to just get a variety of shots. So how far you are from the couple and then getting closer and then getting shots of their feet and then getting shots of them. And now with the zoom lens that I have with the 16 to 35, I can be zooming in and out. So even just this one thing, all I had to do was walk this loop one time. I was able to get a ton of different shots and make this really dynamic sequence here just by kind of piecing them all together. And, if and you know, being paying very really close attention to my framing, all that kind of stuff. And you see they're on the right third of the frame here. Here you can see that I zoomed in. So now I'm all the way up at 35, which on the, the 6300, because it's crop sensor, is closer to like a 50. So I really do love having that. Um, and let's look what we did as far as color here. So you can see we started off here with the 6300. I shoot it um, on matte flat, which is PP8, which is basically... Um, S-Log 3, but I changed the gamma to Cine 4 so that it's not so flat, allows me to shoot all the way down to 200 ISO instead of being capped at 3200 like you would with S-Log. So it's a little bit flat, a little bit uh, desaturated, but then I'm able to pump it back up um, in, in post here. So all I've done to this shot, let's see, is I uh, pulled up the shadows uh, up 
to 17 and I added saturation up to about 150. The saturation is by far the most important thing that you need to be doing um, for the 6300 footage, especially if you're shooting in this matte flat profile. Welcome to Kate and Kevin's wedding. Okay, so audio wise, now we're transitioning into the officiant. He, um, he was talking about Kate and Kevin's wedding and he speaks a lot about Chicago and about the venue. So I really wanted to include that. Another thing to note in this is that we didn't have any um, note audio, if I'm remembering correctly. So we had to really use a lot of unique different areas just because they, they just didn't really do notes and that was totally fine. We don't force anybody to do anything. So we had to get a little more creative uh, with the audio that we are using for this film. Kate and Kevin chose you each one of you. So this is the back center shot. This is the 5D Mark III with the 24 to 70, probably set to about like 35-ish. All right, so here's the venue. So I didn't honestly think that the venue from the outside was that a that uh, like photogenic. It's, it's just kind of an old built brick building, but it's very historic. It's very uh, important, and it's right next to the zoo, which is like a big uh, thing in Chicago that's very well known. So it was important to show it. It was very important to the couple. So there's the name as he says it, and then I have this cool tilt down shot, the 6300. It is fitting that the wedding is here. So I think that this is okay because even though he's speaking in the voiceover down here, you can't really see his mouth. So you know, you it could be that he's speaking here. But I like to grab a few different types of shots like this, especially if it's like a longer ceremony and I have the you know all the cameras are set up on the tripods and they're rolling. I do like to grab the 6300 and grab a few different shots, just like in case of this sort of thing, I can just throw it in here. This long-standing top shelf. So here he's talking about, again, more about the venue. And I think that this is a much better view of the venue because, you know, we've got the you know, some buildings here. We've got the, the water. This right here is the zoo in this kind of general area. We've got Lake Michigan. Like, this is just a really cool spot. It really helps you to see, like, exactly what's around it. And it's a good transition shot. So this is the left angle. And I actually moved this shot a couple different times that you'll see throughout um, but this is my C100 Mark II with the 100 millimeter macro. That's the longest lens that we have aside from the 70 and 200, which is what Ash has on the other side. And you'll so you'll see that when we get further into the into the vows. All right, so his audio fades out. The music sort of drops in in sort of like mellows out for a second here, and there's actually some like. Um, string instruments being played. So I had these really cool slow mo shots of the violinists in the the string instrumentists playing their instruments. So uh, this is me. So this is just some cool shots. I think that go well with the way the music is. I always try and grab these shots. I just think that they look cool, especially with like the shallow depth of field. Um, these are all with the C100, uh, probably with the 50 millimeter 1.2, if I had to guess. Um, and you can see here that this is kind of what we started at. Again, good looking, starts off looking really nice. And then that's just with the LUT. Because as you can see, I did not touch any of these clips. I didn't do anything to them. This is just straight out of camera. So here's straight out of camera and here's with the LUT. It just kind of mutes it down, gives it a little bit more of that like moody sort of feel that we're going for. I really like it. It's very cinematic. It doesn't feel dark, but it feels cinematic. Like I really enjoy it. But yeah, this is just straight out of camera. Straight out of camera with the LUT. Not doing a whole lot to it. And then we've got some really good, uh, this is just like some transition shots of everybody setting up the reception. They had really amazing reception details and they they really paid a lot of attention to that. So I really wanted to highlight them in here. So we got some cool shots of um, them just setting it up. Again, just kind of showing the earlier parts of the day here. Okay, so let's look at some of these shots here. So this is, again, I'm like shooting with a little bit longer lens. You can see we've got a ton of bokeh, which is really nice. Um, this is probably with the 85, if I had to guess, on the C100. And I was just sniping off shots of people um, getting stuff together. So here is a nice slider shot. This is the, uh, again, the C100 Mark II with the Sigma 18 to 35, probably around 2.0, 2.2 as far as aperture goes. Um, and I am just, you know, getting some nice sliding shots. I really like, I just really like the way that this looks. So let's look at before. So this is before, this is after. And again, if you look, 
what have I done? I did some little warp stabilizer just because I like everything to be as smooth as possible, especially if it's a slider shot. But other than that, I didn't do anything to these shots, guys. And this is why I love the C100 so much because it looks so good right out of camera. Even here, you can see it's a little magenta. And if I were to just use this, I'd probably adjust the white balance a little bit. But with the LUT on, I think it looks perfect. I just love the way that it looks. Cool shot here. Same thing. This might have been with the 50 or the 18 to 35 really close, but just, you know, letting my focus draw start over here and let it just draw across the menu. So I'm not racking focus or anything fancy like that. Just coming nice and slow across. Um, and I just really, I just think this is a really cool shot before and after. And, you know, just a little warp stabilizer. Again, a little extra smoothness goes a long way. I love, I love warp stabilizer. And these are all 24 frames per second. These aren't slowed down or anything. They just look really good. All right, so then we've got some cool different shots. So as far as the day, the way the day went is the uh, they got ready in the hotel. We did the first look, and then we went and got on a trolley with all of the bridesmaids and the groomsmen and the bride and groom. And we went to a couple of different spots throughout the day. So we actually had a ton of time for portraits, uh, which was really great. Um, but so yeah, we had hit up this one spot right here which is downtown, like right by the river right in front of Trump Tower. And then we went down to the pier, which was the shots you saw earlier, those walking shots. So we hit those really those two spots. And then we went to Cafe Brower to do the to do the ceremony and the reception and everything there. So but we did spend about two hours driving around and getting shots, which is really nice and something that's a bit of a luxury. So here is some slow mo a6300 of them just walking again with the traffic in the background. I thought this was kind of cool. So I had them do it twice. So we did it one time with the wide, you know, the wide shot, the push in. Um, and then I had them do it again and I came in closer with it and I zoomed in on the 6300. And then I, so I went from the wide shot to the tight shot back to the wide shot, making it feel very dynamic. Um, but we just had them do the spin Actually two times went to high school together and graduated in the same so we're back to this so it looks luckily for me the lighting and everything was very similar from the the day of the wedding to the next day so everything looked really similar but these are just some cool shots of the train the tell and it just was moving around i was on the 100 millimeter on the c100 um and yeah so for this settings settings wise Probably around 5.6 is what I usually shoot at outside. I don't like to shoot it too high because then you start to see all my sensor dust. Um, and with mirrorless cameras especially, it's, you're just going to get sensor dust. There's no way around it. So around 5.6. Um, shutter is just cranked. I don't use an ND filter for this. I really should. Um, again, shooting at 60 frames per second. 1080p, 6300. C100, Mark II. Some shots of the flags. Tight shot. When you're shooting these pickup establishing shots, again, you just want to shoot um, variety and you want to, again, think of your normal basic principles, wide, medium, tight, begin, middle, end. So you can see we have like the beginning. So like here comes this train. And then I, this probably all, I don't even know if it all happened in the same train. It might've been two different times when the train passed by. But then if we cut that to a tight shot of a, another train going by, it all just sort of fits seamlessly. So same here, absolutely nothing done to the footage, just adding the LUT. Ugh, I love it. It looks so good. They tell me that they didn't really know each other in high school, but the truth is... Okay, so you can see here that now I moved my C100 Mark II on the side to get closer. I didn't like my original shot, and I actually think I switched lenses. Originally, I start with like the 50 so that I can have a little bit more room because uh, I'm on the... I'm on the gimbal when everybody's coming in. So I'm not manning my C100. Ash is manning hers. Mine's unmanned. So I start with the 50 on there to keep it a little bit wider, which is the shot you saw first. And then I switch to the 100 millimeter macro sometime during a prayer or whenever I get a chance that there's a gap where I can switch to my longer lens. So here's the longer lens. I've gotten to know Kevin very well over the last six months. And my sense is that he has had his eye on Kate for a very long time. Okay, so this shot right here, um, was the first shot of the day. So I'm actually pretty happy with the way it turned out. But one of the reasons why it works, again, this is just a 6300 before and after, nothing crazy. But the reason why this shot works and the motion feels so smooth, even though it's not slowed down, this is just 24 frames per second, 4K, is one, because there's a warp stabilizer on it, like everything else. But you see this branch right here? 
and these trees, just having that in the frame. So I intentionally walked over here to shoot from underneath this coming forward because this was a pretty small street. It wasn't very big and it was a pretty tall building. Like I couldn't back up far enough away to get like a really good slider shot or really good gimbal shot. But by using this tree branch here and these other foreground elements like the cars and stuff, it really sells that motion and makes it look really cool. And even though I can't only see like a portion of the building, it's still, I think this is a really cool shot, uh, especially considering it wasn't shot in slow-mo. For a very long time. So we just got done with the pastor again. He's kind of giving a little bit of backstory. He basically kind of explained their whole dating story, which is what I really try and focus on in my films. I really want it to be very focused on the couple and their story and all that sort of stuff. So we had all that. Um, we were recording. So he had, this was all just, luckily he was talking into this um, mic. I did have a mic on him, but this ended up sounding better uh, just for whatever reason. So I just went with that. The groom is wearing a lav underneath his collar here. You can't see it, but he is wearing it. So you'll hear that later. Um, but yeah, so this is just the audio that I got from also from my test cam DR40 plugged into the soundboard. So that's great. All right. So now we're onto some shots of the bride getting her makeup and her hair and stuff done. Um, this is a little bit of like a crazy morning. So we really only got a couple shots of this, but end up looking really good. So let's look at some. Here's before. And here's after. Um, so we put a warp stabilizer on this for no motion. So let's see why. So let me turn it off. Let's play it. See how it's shaking just a little bit? See that? I don't know why it was like that, but when I add the warp stabilizer and I have selected here no motion, that's important. And then um, position, I change it to position because I really only want it to move around. I don't want it to be like, it kind of gets all warpy and can get kind of weird if you choose the other ones so just position and look at it now a little bit of shake maybe if you look really closely but it's almost unnoticeable so um just this nice close-up shot of the bride probably with a 50 if i had to guess c100 18 to 35 this is a pretty tight area back to probably the 50 here nice tight shot getting a little bit of variety uh, then here we have one of the bridesmaids uh, steaming one of the dresses. This is just a cool transition shot. It doesn't really add much to the story. I just think it looks really cool. And um, it kind of adds to like the, you know, they're paying attention to details and those types of things. Um, but I just shot a whole bunch of different shots of her. Again, shoot for variety. When you see something like this happening, you can turn it into a little scene really easily just by shooting intentionally. You know, we've got wide medium tight detail but wide back again detail and then it all looks like this they went on to separate colleges so let's look at this actually really one more thing let's see what we had to do this one okay so for this one we brought the highlights down so if we do a before and an after it was just a little bit hot probably um but with the LUT, and then we so we brought that down, and that was the only thing we really had to do. Oh, I brought the overall exposure down here, point, 0 0.2. With exposure on Premiere, guys, I always try and do very small, very subtle movements. Um, I very rarely am I going down a full stop of exposure. Um, and so it's really important to get everything correct in camera as much as you can. Uh, but you can see that this is all falling nicely right within our, our scopes here. I probably did the sim same kind of thing for all the different shots. So here we bring back in the pastor and he's explaining more about their story. We talked about at the beginning, he's talking about their dating story. Now he's kind of going into more of their um, like college and stuff like that. Like just I continuing to tell their story. Here's a nice dress shot. So I actually, um, in order to, let's see. Okay, so this is a, let's open this nested sequence. So in here you can see it's actually two shots. So it was here and then here originally, but I didn't like that. Like I wanted the wide shot first, but because of the way that it, it wouldn't have made sense to do the wide shot first because it would have been like, it would have looked weird. So what I did is I nested them together here, have it, you know, have it playing in each of these has, um, let's see, what do we do? They each have warp stabilizer on them in here. And then the whole thing is nested. And then I reversed the speed on the whole thing. So it's playing both shots backwards simultaneously. And I just kind of liked that better for whatever reason. I wanted to do wide first and then tight and that's the only way I could think to do it. So just a little little tidbit there. 
same so same thing here. This is just warp stabilizer on here. So if I take warp stabilizer off, you can see that it's just a little shaky. This is just using the monopod with probably the macro lens, honestly. Um, but put a little warp stabilizer on there. It makes everything look real good. This is one of my favorite shots to do on a wedding day with the with the invitation because it has their names and it has all the information and Chicago and all that stuff. So it's just a really easy shot to grab and a nice transition shot. Sometimes I'll do this with a slider. I didn't have the slider for this one, so I just did it with the monopod and put a little warp stabilizer on there. So, all right, so now we're going into some groom uh, prep stuff. He was, I could tell when I went in here that he was a, gonna get a little like anxious and nervous and he's definitely a, like a, a funny guy. So he's kind of overcompensate by trying to be kind of like goofy. Uh, so, but I was trying really hard to get him to be serious and to like get, so I get some cool shots of him. So it took, it took a little bit of messing around and kind of talking to him and you know, whatever to get some cool shots. So we got some nice, a little nice sequence here. Um, if we look at a little before and after again, nothing done to this straight out of camera, uh, just putting the LUT on it. Okay, so the, he's still going on about their story and how they met. This is one of my favorite shots to do. I have the guy just, I asked him to do it twice. First time I do it with a nice wide shot here, walking in front of the window. And then I do, have him do the same thing again. I zoom in to 35. So it's usually on my 18 to 35. And then I film the whole thing again, cut them together like this. Um, and you can see like, it's not exactly like here he's like reaching for his sleeve and here he's already got it on, but it just, it, with your eye, it just makes sense. Um, before and after for this, let's see what I did. I warmed it up a smidge with temperature. It was a little cool. Um, but yeah, and that's it. I mean, I think it looks pretty, pretty cool for after simple easy 24 frames per second not slow mo or anything so here okay so here is a cool little thing that I ended up doing so what i did so this is with the 85 i'm pretty sure and if you can see here in this shot he's still standing in the same general spot the problem i was having is that this window here was getting blown out um and so i couldn't i was having a hard time finding like a good angle to shoot him that you know because here i could shoot this but i had like these picture frames and whatever so that my favorite shot is definitely this one so what i ended up doing is walking across the room a ways so now i'm like almost like in the other half of the suite and there's this wall here so i use the wall in my foreground to block out the window and all these other distractions have him over here on the right shooting with a longer lens there's some compression so pulling the wall closer into him and the whole thing just feels i don't know just like pretty cool and so with that and then paired with a nice detail shot of his watch and then a tighter shot of his face i don't know i just like this shot and i was able to get this nice shot have the nice window light on him and a little bit of you know side light and front light like it's just good lighting without having to deal with that blown out window so really like that oh, yeah. shot there a little before and after straight out of camera on the lifeguard chair and talk late into the night Cool. Okay. So he's still talking about their story. He's talking about how they, you know, when they first had their first date, we go from the groom getting ready and now we're going back to the bride getting into her dress. This all happened super quickly and we were kind of running late for the first look. So we don't have like a ton, a ton of shots of her getting into her dress, but I really wanted to include her mom in this. She had reached out to us after the wedding and said it was really important that her mom make a have a prominent spot in the film, which I would, normally would do anyway. I just wanted to be doubly sure that she was in here. So we've got a couple different shots here. The next I think one of these might be from Ash. No, I think these are both mine. I was just kind of moving around. 50 millimeter coming in nice and close. The next day, Kevin asked Kate out on their first date. This is a little bit of setting stuff up. We don't set up a ton of stuff, but sometimes when we really need something, like she did this naturally, um, and then I had her kind of recreate it so I could get the shot of her hand and all that sort of stuff. But I just thought it was a cool, a cool shot. Um, and then, so the pastor's saying like a joke in his thing and they laugh. So I wanted to kind of like break up all these different shots of everyone getting ready to jump back to the ceremony again to kind of bring us back so we don't forget like what's going on. We kind of come back to the ceremony. So cuts back so here's the c100 shot my c100 here's ash's shot so she's on the other side with the c100 mark one the 70 to 200 focusing on the bride like that's her her priority 
Uh, here's a little before and a little after. It was a little warm, the light in just in general, but I kind of want to leave it that way because that's just how the lights were in the room. And I think this feels very real to the way that it was. So, And the, and the, tr and the truth is, it is, by all accounts and all measures, the absolute worst movie in the history of cinema. They had a one... So there's a, there's some splicing that's going on here. You can see every time I the nice thing about having like different camera angles is that I can like here I'm pretty sure I covered up like an audio jump where he said a bunch of other stuff that I just chopped out and then same here uh, chopped a bunch of stuff out and now that I'm covering it up with B-roll and stuff it's it's totally fine. So let's look at this shot here again. We're doing the same kind of technique as we did with the groom where I'm using this uh, the curtain to block out the blown out window. So still allow her to have the nice, really nice window light on her, but allowing me to not have like a big blown out window in my shot. So let's look at the before from this. You can see like pretty good. Like the only time over here that we're losing a little bit of data is in this window back here. But there's again, there's only so much you can do. So all I did for this shot is because I was shooting in the window, it was a little hazy. So I upped my contrast. Um, but that's really, that was it. So then we go, we get that, which I think looks real good. And again, the reason I love this LUT is because you can see here that the skin tones are just very, very, very nice. And this LUT just works perfectly with my C100 and my C100 cameras. So shooting for variety here. So a little bit medium, a tight close-up shot, even tighter of her, of her ears or fingers in her ears. Uh, this nice shot of her looking down and then looking up. So this obviously was two different shots. So I had her do it once, you know, look down. Okay. Now look up at the window and then I did it again from a tighter shot. I like this. So this is actually with the 18 to 35 and so it feels very close and it feels very intimate. I try and choose my focal lengths very intentionally whenever I'm shooting. So sometimes you just have to choose out of necessity and that's just the way that it goes. But if I can, I like to choose some focal lengths that give you that like kind of intimate feel like you feel like you're right there with her. And I just really like this. This is a very nice, you know, beauty shot. And again, the skin tones look great. Everything looks super nice and sharp and um, shallowed up the field. We've got some nice backlighting and we've got this nice clean wall. It just feels a very, I don't know. I just think it's a very beautiful shot. And I think that it, it looks really cool. And you've got to have some nice like hero shots in there. At the Lincoln Park Zoo. Okay, so now we're back to some B-roll. Again, this is B-roll I shot the next day. Um, this is a cool little sequence of like, so I saw the the taxis, the water taxis came by a couple of different times. So I think this is a combination of two different times of the taxi coming by. Um, so this is, I saw him coming from afar. I had my long lens on, got this shot, switched at the last second, and I barely got this, but I wanted this like shot top down shot of it coming through and I was a little bit off. So that's why there's only a few seconds of it, but you get the idea like Chicago water taxi. And then here again, using some foreground elements to just add some intrigue to this shot using this cement. I don't even know what it was like wall divider thing with these things. And then you see it going by. I don't think this is even, it's not even the same. It's not the same boat, but it happens so fast in the shot or in the, in the film that, people aren't really going to notice care or it's not going to matter. So just a cool shot. All right. So here, same idea. So trying to get buildings when you're far away from buildings and using the gimbal, you need to have some sort of foreground element. So here again, we have the 6,300. We use this tree as a foreground element. So it really sells this motion. Um, I just think it looks really cool. So this also is warp stabilized. Um, we'll see before and after. We didn't have to do, let's see what we did to this. Um, so we cooled it off just a smidge. We added some magenta and then we added saturation up to 150. So other than that, and then the LUT of course, but so this nice cool shot. So here you can see that our first song, the audio has ended um, while he was speaking. So we kind of let it fade out into the last thing that he says here. They had a wonderful time. They really enjoyed each other's company. And the next date followed quickly, and it was right next door at the Lincoln Park Zoo. So here, when we fade in the next song, this is a nice little transition. I like to use the end of one audio section of him speaking to kind of bridge that gap from the one music ending to the next one starting. I think it makes it feel more seamless because you're focusing on what he's saying and what you're seeing, and you're less focused on what's happening with the music until this new sh new song comes in, which is a little bit more upbeat, a little bit brighter. Um, and so I want the editing and everything to kind of match that. 
you know, I wanted the like downbeat to kind of come like right as the into the transition and so here we've got some slow-mo, love some slow-mo here. So this we had to do a little bit of color correction on. You can see we actually had to do a, quite a bit. So this was underexposed. So let's look at before. Yeah, so look at that. It was way underexposed because I had, I went from this shot to this shot really fast. Like I saw them coming and I just didn't have my settings wrong. So, uh, but you can still save it. It's a little bit dark even still. It's a little moody. Um, but so I lifted the shadows, exposure up, a whole stop and a half, which I never, never try and do that, but it works. Um, saturation 150%. And this is just 6,300, 60 frames per second. And then I got behind them and I got my exposure right and all that jazz. So here, um, the only thing we're doing is the saturation in the temperature. But again, I'm, I'm choosing between the different focal lengths. I'm getting closer and further from them. And we just make this really nice sequence here of them walking and holding hands. Again, we had so much really, really good, like, and green portrait time stuff that I wanted to work a lot of that in there. So one thing you'll notice is a case. All right. So now we have the bridesmaid. She's coming in as the music is sort of swelling here. They are. They're getting on the trolley. This actually was right after the first look and not right after this shot, but it makes sense. It all flows together here. One thing you'll notice is that Kate is everyone's best friend. Here they are on the trolley. This was important to them. You know, they spent some good money on this and they wanted to document the time of them all hanging out. I didn't think that we needed too many shots of it, but uh, just enough. So here we have this girl, she's talking, she's the matron of honor. And I wanted pretty quickly when someone new starts talking, I want to establish who they are as fast as possible within like reason. So I just want to make sure we <laughs> cut to her really quickly just to get a good shot of her. Um, so let's look at the coloring for this shot. So as you can see, we have her on the left third. This is the C100 Mark II with probably the 70 to 200, which is what I use for speeches. The audio in this place, or sorry, the um, the lighting in this place was really kind of weird. Um, so I had my light set up just to the left of this tree, my uh, Felix P360 shooting on her. But then they also had brought in some lights that were spotting on the dance floor. There was four of them from four different corners, all spotting it on the dance floor. But they were really, really warm, like almost like a weird tone so you'll see as we get to more reception footage it was just sort of weird but i think we ended up making it work the hair light on her is a little blue it's pretty eh, it's, it doesn't look too bad but here's a before here's an after so because i was shooting into my light a little bit more than i wanted to and i have a cracked filter on my 7200 it's probably more the reason why uh the um this shot was very hazy as you can see here it just it just doesn't look super great. So I actually have the blacks pulled down on this all the way to a hundred just to increase the, the decrease that haziness and to add more pop into the blacks. But I think it ends up looking pretty good here. Um, again, just with the before and after. My favorite so. of Kate's qualities. She's unbelievably loyal and makes everyone feel important. So here, this is all some slow-mo out of the C100 Mark II. So up until this wedding, I'm pretty sure we had never had slow-mo in any of our C100. So it was actually really nice to be able to pair some slow-mo C100 shots, which I think just look really, really nice and just kind of help like this moment sort of hang and give it some importance. Unbelievably loyal. It makes everyone feel important. So we got a couple of tight bouquet shots. And then this is actually a 6300 shot. So we had to do a little bit of... Um, of color matching here so we, to go from this c100 shot which we did absolutely nothing to right so this is just straight out of camera we are matching the 6300 to that so i think it's always important to pick your main camera that you want to match everything to and so you're not trying to match back and forth so i want everything to always match the c100 the c100 is the priority so let's wait till you see the before and after of this shot so this is the before and this is the after so let's see what we had to do for this so actually isn't I guess it's not too too much so we had to bring the exposure up by a whole stop I was underexposed um, we cool it off a smidge and add some magenta so that's the biggest difference I've found between the Sony and the Canon if you have Sony and Canon you're trying to match them it's really important that you pay attention to your magenta because the C100s have a lot of magenta and the Sony's have a lot of green so you want to make sure that you're adding in magenta to your to your Sony shots to help them match the Canon. That I think is one of the best things that you can do to help them match. Um, but add the, bumped up the exposure, pulled down the shadows to make it match a little bit, increase our saturation. And then with, so if let's just do this. So if I turn the LUT off, 
let's go. So here's the C100 straight out of camera. Here is the um, Sony with the different tweaks. What if I turn that off? So we went from that to that, which is a pretty big significant difference. But so then we're comparing that to that, which I think personally looks pretty darn close. Um, Again, I didn't do anything to the Canon footage, but then when you put the LUT on top of it, I think that also helps just make everything feel very cohesive. Even if it's not perfect between the Sony and the Canon, I think when you put the LUT on, that kind of just like nullifies everything and makes everything look really good. So important. She gives everyone equal attention. And it, I just like this gimbal shot. It's very subtle, just a little bit. I probably just took my arms from here straight out. It just adds just enough movement, especially in the slow-mo and with the other shots, I think it looks really good. And, and then we transition into this shot of them advice. walking. So this is a, an example of just like always be shooting when you're walking and transitioning, like just always kind of have your camera out and ready. They were just, we were just walking from the trolley out to where we we're going to go do photos and they all just were happening to be walking together. So I just grabbed this quick little pickup shot here. Um, same, same thing here. I was uh, underexposed, so bump up the exposure bump up the whites to add a little more pop and again adding in some magenta to help it match everything else so that's uh one thing i would i will say with the sony's and just video in general it's better to underexpose and to overexpose so a lot of these shots you're going to see me bumping up the exposure in post over here and that's okay i'm a hundred thousand percent okay with that if you're at a point where you're overexposing things and you have blown out skies and blown out highlights and if her dress was blown out there's nothing you can do to get that back I can always bump it up and it really you can't even really tell a difference so when you're shooting make sure you're protecting your highlights with with everything that you do lend an ear or give advice whether so it's we're, something trivial we're, or something we're time jumping all over the place here but that's totally fine so this was later on this is with the c100 slow-mo i just like the slow-mo because it kind of again slows the moment down this is a cool intimate little moment between the two of them looking at each other smiling laughing even with everything else that's going on like it's we're still focusing in on them and their connection on this trivial day or something life-changing and then I wanted the to show the groom and his groomsmen. We had a bunch of shots with the bridesmaids. So I was trying to make it, you know, as fair as possible. So added some cool Hardest groomsmen shots in here. Put some said, nice shots of the um, of the boutonniere. Because, again, you want to show these little details and stuff. And it just kind of makes a nice little transition shot. Three years when she worked full time, went to grad school. and Okay, so wedding. back to her talking. is just really, honestly, it's just like as a transition shot. I just wanted a little bit of a a breather so to go back to her as she's saying this last little statement and then this shot here i'm pretty sure i had to do a decent amount too so this was just a c100 on the monopod quick little pan down shot of the skyline um this was like as i was flying going to fly the drone i think i stood over here to fly the drone and get those all the drone shots um i picked up this quick little c100 shot just to add a little transition kind of back to the ceremony from being out in the city to now you can see that we're obviously not at the city anymore we're further away but this one if we look at before and after it's just overexposed um you can see here that we're losing we're almost losing like it's just enough where it's not peaking too bad over here it, it's peaking but everything else we have enough data here that we can kind of just drop it all down make it look nice and then for this i dropped the blacks to add a little more contrast and i dropped the exposure down a smidge but other than that Driven. pretty and good we got some shots of people come in again always try and be on the lookout for this type of thing these are just random guests i don't even know who these people were but these are just some good little transition Man shots to bring us back inside so i'm i'm bringing the viewer Right, my whole thought process behind this is so here we were, we were doing all these shots with the groomsmen and bridesmaids, and she's talking about how great Kate is, and I'm getting ready to transition into the the ceremony, like where the bride comes in and the vows and like all that kind of stuff. I know that that's coming, so I'm trying to bring the viewer back to that place. But I don't want to just drop them back in. Like at the beginning, we just wanted them dropped in, but now we're trying to like build them up and let people see, like, oh, this is what it was like to be there. Adding some more information, and so here we have, you know, the wide shot of the city, so you can feel where we were in relation to downtown. We show people that are driving, you know, getting in, pulling up in their car, getting out of the car, feet walking in. This is a shot I love to do. I love the framing of this with, you know, kind of the top third is where they're going to walk through. Um, this type of a shot and then we're transitioning now we're inside and here's some people standing here and waiting and guys can we just talk about how good the skin tones look on this like here's before here's after 
I added a little bit of warmth because I was a little cool. But like, guys, it looks so good. I just love the way that this LUT works. I've taken, it's taken me a really long time to find a LUT and kind of like a look that I really, really love. And I'm really, really loving this. So it's exactly what I want. So anyway, so we've got people standing in here, sitting around waiting for the ceremony to start. Um, just a couple of different shots. These are all, again, C100. I'm just sniping off shots as people are walking in, probably with 100. Um, okay, so let's. So now let's kind of break down uh, how we handle processionals. So for the processional, you can see right here's Ash. She's got the 70 to 200 on the C100. And we always like to have the tripod as high as it'll possibly go. Um, so when people stand up, sometimes they're still going to block it, but at least you have a shot of it not being blocked. And it helps the camera to just be on the same eye line as the couple. Um, we, it just helps to prevent having to shoot up and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, so you can see that it's pretty high. It's above Ashley's head. Um, that's where the articulating screen comes in handy. Um, so what I do on the gimbal is I'm just following people as they come in. So I kind of find a good spot where I can kind of move around. And luckily there's a pretty big area back here where I could be moving around and stuff. But I'm just moving around following people as they come in. This was a little tricky because the guys came from this side and there's a stairwell back here and the girls um, came from this side and they kind of met in the middle. So it wasn't the most ideal situation for me with the glide cam, it's but you can see that we kind of make it, we make it work here. So you can see up here, see how orange the light is up here, um, just from these lights and they had some spotlights and stuff. So white balance wise, it was kind of a little bit of a struggle, but here you can see a little bit before and after just really mostly adding the LUT. Um, this is also warp stabilized, of course. Actually had to cool it off a little bit and the saturation. So very, very similar. A circle of its love. Marriage encompasses all but I'm shooting all these at 18 on the on my lens or 16, I guess. Most important Get nice and low. So this is, you know, I mean, this was a shot where you might look at this and you don't really think much about it. It's not necessarily the coolest shot in the whole world, but it's really important to note that I literally am crouching down to get the camera on her level because I think that just makes you feel that much more like immersed in it. And I could have stood up and just angled the camera down and pointed it at her, but it wouldn't have looked nearly as cool and it wouldn't. I don't know, I just wanted to fit into the story as well. So I think bringing the camera down to her level just adds a lot to this shot. So just, that's something just simple to note. Are each other's best friend, okay, so this shot is a go-to staple shot that I try and get at every single wedding. So basically what I have here, talking about again, setup. So Ash is still over here, right out of frame here, we have my C100 and right back here, which is like in this back corner is the 5D with the... 24 to 70 set all the way to 24. And what I'm gonna do with this camera eventually is I'm gonna pick it up and I'm gonna move it over here to the back center of the aisle to get our back center shot that you saw from earlier. But for this shot, instead of just having it sitting somewhere in a corner, filming nothing, I've started to have it pointing at the uh, you know, the audience, the crowd or whatever. So when the bride comes and everybody stands up, I have a shot of it. Uh, because otherwise all my other cameras, none of them are really getting that very well. And it's a really nice transition shot from anything else uh, into the bride coming. Like everyone kind of already knows what that means. So that's why I try and have this shot here. And then I'm following the bride. This always sort of bugs me. This girl was super, super nice and she was super sweet and she was very helpful to us throughout the whole day. So I have nothing against her, but I, whenever planners in general do this thing where they walk with the bride all the way out, it kind of just kills me. It kills my heart. Cause I would just, this would be a really, this would be a really great shot if it was just her walking to her dad. And it still was a good shot, but anyway, 16 millimeter on the, so on the 6300 Medic. F4 following her cut to where the other, you know, the girl's gone. Um, the photographer is right here. You can kind of see her. So what I try and do for these is I try and follow into the aisle just enough. So I literally like cut across to about here. And then I just kind of keep going as you can see, like my pat my trajectory as I go out of the aisle. So that way I'm out of the photographer's way. And then as soon as I see that it's clear, I'll run back over to where my 5D Mark III is and grab that and bring that over here and set that down. So meanwhile, while she's coming, Ash has this shot of the groom. Um, I, I would have preferred for the framing if his head was more over here and we had him looking more into the negative space of the frame. Um, but I think she had to move right before this. So the fact that she got it at all is better than nothing. So not a big deal. 
And then, so here we have, we get into the vows and I normally try not to keep the photographer in here at all. And I do tell the photographers like, hey, if you block my shot for a second, it's not a big deal. Like, don't worry about it. Um, in this case, it was the only, like one of those few times where I was actually moving my camera over here uh, because when he went to go read his note, he shifted and then I didn't have a good angle for him and I really needed his angle, obviously. So you can see if we cut over to um, my angle, you can't really see his face. So I was getting ready to move and then Ash is obviously on her, so you can't really see. So this is the only angle to use. It's only for a few seconds. Um, it's not ideal, but you know, it's, it's fine. Um, so he starts to talk and then to cover up some of the, just like waiting for the transition, I just cut to a few of these, like this quick sequence. We shot these after the ceremony, um, just outside walking around the, the venue, but I thought these were nice. Slow-mo, very cute, like cute and intimate. And I love this shot. So this was the 85 and I saw this shot from a distance. So I had these like hydrangea things here, had them over here off to the side. Just really like, look at that bokeh. Like, mm, look at that bokeh. So that's at like 1.4 probably, maybe 1.2. Like I was getting kind of crazy. Um, Slow-mo on this 100. So one, one twentieth of a second shutter. And that's what, again, I love ND filters because I can have proper shutter and shoot crazy wide open and have this awesome bokeh, but also have really natural motion people. blur. Um, okay, so for their vows, they were doing um, the kind of like traditional vows going back and forth, and they said the same one. So what I, I don't like to have like him say the whole thing and then her say the whole thing. I think that's kind of boring and it takes too long. So what I do is I'll have him say like one or two lines, her say one or two lines, him say one or two lines, her say one or two lines. Loyal to you and to give you my companionship and love for the rest of our lives. I promise to support. Okay, so audio wise, um, what we're ha what's happening here is the you can see that he is holding this mic like really close to her. He is wearing the lav. So we're actually switching back and forth between his audio from his lav with the Roland RO5 to her audio from the Tascam. And what I did for the audio is I have this multiband compressor that I've been using. Um, that such a broadcast. This is a, also something I sold from Matt Johnson. If you guys don't follow Matt Johnson on YouTube, you should go follow for, follow him because I learned a lot of stuff from him, and he's the man. And you should go subscribe to his YouTube channel right now. I'll link it up here. Um, but yeah, so I use this multiband compressor, and then I just am kind of messing around with the levels to get it to sound close to the same um, but you can see that it's you know the my peaks are hitting around like negative six between negative six and negative three and i just try to make some so they're both the same so at least like their volume like the loudness is the same for the rest of our lives i promise to support your dreams so this kind of just back and forth offering courage and strength and i also don't like to just have nothing but straight up uh, vows so here i just have this one nice slow-mo walking shot it doesn't really have any context, but he, he talks about like walking beside her for the rest of their life. It just works. Again, this is the same thing. 85 outside slow-mo. Look at that bokeh. Courage Love it. Through all of life's endeavors, both so joyful and sorrowful. I vow to always listen to you. Learn. So his, you can actually, because of the difference in the mics, this, uh, the pickup pattern just must be different. You can hear more of the fan in his audio. At least I can in my headphones listening to it now. Um, but again, there's only so much that you can do. You, his you, his sounded better coming out of the Roland. From this day forward, I'll be proud to be your wife and your best friend. I'll be proud to be your husband and your best friend. See the photographer again. I just wanted to break up the going from like his shot, her shot, his shot, her shot, wide shot, his shot. Please now share the first of a lifetime. So then we jump forward to the kiss. Okay, so kiss we've got a nice. So this is the only angle really you can see his face or the guy talking. So we had to have that. So here, and then we go, this is a good, nice tight shot from Ash, wide shot. So I actually, while this is always going on, I made sure my, my shot over here was good. And then I abandon that camera. I pick up the 6300, I go to the back. I actually noticed here that the photographer was in my shot. So I zoomed in on the 24 to 70, reframed this shot. So I'd have this for the kiss. And then I'm in the back with the 6300 ready for the recessional so I can follow them back up the aisle with the gimbal. Okay, so we go back to the wide shot, which I zoomed in a little bit, but it's still the wide shot. Back to this shot for like the end of the kiss. Um, and then she smiles at him. 
powers vested in me by the state of Illinois. It is with great... He says this whole spiel. So instead of, again, just showing him just standing there talking through the whole spiel, I wanted the spiel in there, so I just cut this, again, this cool the sequence the from, the, from earlier with the skyline and everything and back there. That I ask all of us. All right, look at this shot. This shot we did a lot of color correction on, so it was pretty blah. But again, we're, we're matching this to... Oh, not that, but this. So this to that. Is it exactly the same? Not really. But I think it looks pretty dang good, pretty close. To go from that to that, like, because this is the C100 and this is the 6300. I'm pretty happy with that. So what did I do to it? I, um, I didn't do anything to that. Maybe I did it all over here. Let's see. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So again, cooling it off, adding a magenta. That's really important. Bumping up the exposure, 150 on saturation. Welcome for the first time. And of course, warp stabilizer. Congratulate the newly married couple, Kevin Roche and Catherine Hoffman. So we cut back to them. We get a little sir, a little schmooch. And then we just jump straight to them walking out. Again, she reached for her flowers. and But again, we're trying to trying to zip through this a little bit here. So we don't need to show everything. It's a that's why we do these. So I'm actually jumping back and forth between. So he was the the efficient was on the task cam, and then we go to his audio for some more clapping, and I've got some you know like a little fade in between, and then I actually cut up some of his audio because he started talking, uh, which is obviously fine, but I didn't want that. I just wanted more clapping, so I just looped some clapping clips here, and you can't really tell. And then we fade that out. So here they walk back. So again, back here, I'm back here with the 6300 just for this shot so I can follow them back. And I'm literally shoulder to shoulder with the photographer here. And we had a little bit of a like a non-verbal exchange right before this. So it was like, are you good? Am I good? What lens do you have? And we like figured it out and we just stood next to each other and we both got this shot. So my favorite shot to get. Okay, so then we go to a little bit of cocktail hour stuff. Um, I just was happened to be walking out there with the gimbal as everybody else is walking out there. So again, it makes you feel like you're part of the movement. So it's a little bit wider of a shot. You feel like you're as you feel like you're a guest walking out to cocktail hour. So I like that. Um, these are Ashes shots with the C100. Or no, these are my shots. My shots with the C100. Just people talking. I usually use a longer lens for this, just for the ease of it. People don't feel awkward if they feel like you're filming them talking and stuff. Um, yeah, I tr always try to look for, wait for somebody to laugh or to smile or to do something. And I just kind of film. Well, I was trying to get people getting their drinks from the bar. I love this shot. Okay. So we're back to some more details shots. So as I was shooting the details and stuff, um, I think I shot it a couple of different times that so they had to flip the whole room. So it actually went from being light for some of them when I shot them before, uh, and then it got darker as I went. So there's like a different vibe to some of these shots as we went. Um, but I really like this shot. So this shot has warp stabilizer on it, of course. So let me just show you before and after before again, it's smooth. But like when I put the warp stabilizer on it, it's just smoother. Like it just looks better. Like I just love it. But here again, so we're shooting pretty shallow, um, which again is why, part of the reason why I love the C100 because you can shoot shallow, get this nice bokeh, but still have good solid focus. Like if this is full frame and I was trying to shoot this wide open, the it would be like a sliver of focus. But here I have a little bit more to play with. Um, let's look at before, after. Again, I'm not doing anything to this straight out of camera but you can see how just this LUT works so well with because you see how, like when I look at this now there's a lot of magenta in there but the LUT does a really good job of toning that down adding just enough warmth to the highlights um, and I just think it looks really good and I just love all the bokeh that you're getting like reflecting in the glasses and stuff again using foreground elements for sliders and for gimbals look for foreground elements using this glass as a foreground element focus here Oh, it looks so good. Same thing here. Look at all that bokeh. They brought out all these candles and I just was going bokeh crazy. Shooting this pretty wide open, like 1.2, I think, just because I really wanted some bokeh. This shot, I had to do a bunch of stuff with it. You can see that it was, um, let's see if I reset this. It was crooked. I, my, my uh, head or my slider was just on there crooked and I was moving fast. I didn't have time to level it, I guess. But you just do a little, like a negative two on the rotation to get it straight. And then when you do that, you've got to make sure that you scale it up because if you go, if you, it was at a hundred, uh, you can see, uh, let's see if I take this off. 
um, see this, see how you've got this like weird angle here because it's so skewed. Um, so if you, if I turn off everything underneath of it, so if I turned uh, this off, see how we've got this weird like angle here and up here. So that's why you have to scale it up. So I had it scaled up to um, 116 just because I like that framing better. But um, yeah, so you got to make sure you're careful of that when you're doing rotations and stuff. But you can rotate. Again, this is only 1080p footage. So scaling it up to 116, technically you are losing quality. But if you keep your numbers small, like 105 to 116 is like the highest I'll ever go probably. You're good. Kate and Kevin are a great couple. They're both dedicated. Again, look at all that Boca. Mm, love it. Okay. To their friends, as you can see. And honestly, I think I might have had to have an ND filter on for these because uh, I was so wide open at eight at 850 ISO, which I always try and stay at uh, 1.2, 1 148th of a second shutter. Pretty sure I had an ND filter on, but look at that Boca. Friends, as you can see. And most importantly, a bunch of slider shots. So you got this girl pouring. So we have got a nice wide shot. Friends too. And then this nice tight shot. And look at the bokeh. This is why having nice lenses and I just, oh, it looks so good. Okay. So before and after, it looks good here. It looks better here, I think. Straight out of camera, nail it in camera, and your life will be so much easier. I don't have to spend very much time color correcting at all, guys. I really don't. It just looks. It just looks good. Um, They're a perfect a cool mix shot. of practical and fun. And All right. So then I always struggle with the like everybody coming in for the ceremony stuff. Like I want to include it, but at the same time, I can't include everybody. So I only pick the ones that are like really exciting. So here I am. So I'm on the A6300. You can see our light situation we have going on here like this be like this right here is a light there's another one over here there's another one back behind me like on all four corners of the dance floor so the light on them is see it's just weird like when you look at this it's just like weird light i couldn't and then this like harder light this whiter light that's my light so we had a lot of light going on in this whole situation but i want to keep everything a little on the warm side like even this still is pretty warm but um so you can see what I'm doing here is I had to cool it off a lot because um, when you take the warm footage and then you add the warm LUT, it just was like way too warm. So I uh, cooled it off with temperature here and added the saturation. And it looks like that's all I really had to do as far as like, and then adding tint, obviously that's kind of what we always do. Um, but it was pretty good. You know, it I ended up Kevin. being fine. So here's a nice pickup shot Ash got. We had to stabilize the crap out of this because this was the shot. Even it was that. Well, I don't know what happened, but I really liked them clapping. So then it smoothed it out like crazy. That's how good warp stabilizer is. Okay, so I only actually showed one people coming in, even though they all had kind of fun stuff. I just wanted to show, this is my favorite one. Man tolerates Bravo. <laughs> That was a good one. And then them clapping and then here they come. So they had a really good introduction. So again, 16 millimeters on the 16 to 35. Here's a before, here's an after. I like, I like to keep my reception stuff dark. It's not underexposed. If we look at the scopes, there's no, we're not clipping on black at all. This, these lines are just the bars. It's not clipping. It's good. It's definitely on like the dark side, but that's how it looks in real life. Like I don't want to, I could take this and I could, boost it up you know we can have it so it was like this you know and that's fine but Marriage that's not new right like that's that's whatever like that's okay it's not it doesn't look bad and this is probably more like properly exposed but that's not what it looked like when you were there with your eye like when i was there with my eyes like that's not what my eyes saw my eyes saw this like much closer to this and i really like the way that this looks more so um same thing for this you know we had to drop the temperature way down but i liked it being on the darker side than as opposed adventure. to just like cranking it up like I crazy been married long enough to be an expert but so we just come jump straight into the first first dance um so there's my light the other lights are up and out of frame but you can see we've got a bunch of weird shadows and everything and this was it looked like it had like a like a filter or something on it weird i don't know what was going on I with that but i asked if they could turn it off and then they told me that they paid for those lights so i was like oh okay I guess I'll just work with them. So it's fine. Really it's it's a little a warm, but I think that it's fine. That's again, that's what it looked like when we were Kevin there. All right. So here's a good, this all ends up all actually being 6,300 footage. And this is just from moving around a lot. Um, 6,300, 6,300 wide, 6,300 wide, 6,300 tight. Uh, gosh, it just looks so good. Here's before. 
here's after we zoomed in on this one it looks like like crazy to keep it it was it must have been crooked yeah so we zoomed in again 106 to fix the rotation but that's fine you know um for sharing i just love that shot tight tight my best all that ended up being on the gimbal and i had shots from ash and stuff like that that i could have used but i think i just liked a little bit of motion it added to like their vibe into the music and like everything i just liked having it be the more motion centered shots than not so okay so now we're transitioning out of like she's finishing wrapping up what she's saying about them and then we're going to jump into our last final section of the film here we're right at seven minutes um and we're going to jump into the fun reception party dancing and stuff like friend, that mary her other best friend has been one of the highlights of my entire life so again this is a pretty dark shot but I like that. Like, I like that it's dark because that's what it looked like. It was dark in there. So here you can see my light now is the only light that's on the dance floor. So it was good that I had it set up. Um, well, I guess maybe they had a little bit of the speckles still on. But my light is doing a lot of work over here. Um, and they turned off all the other house lights. So it was pretty dark. But I always try and do, like, a bunch of wide shots. Um, it's easy to get caught up on the dance floor and only get, like, tight dancing shots. But I like to have these nice, like, pan down. Especially, like, the roof was cool and that kind of stuff. So just starting up with my 6300, walking forward and panning down slowly. Yeah. Highlights of my entire get this life. nice shot again see notice the okay. theme here see this tree i walked past this tree on purpose because it makes the mo the motion feel life. that much cooler I'm so glad to be part of it i love you all right so again this is the first time we had the 6300 or sorry the 5d c100 mark 2 with 60 frames per second so we shot a bunch of dancing stuff at 60 frames per second and i like it like i think it looks cool i do think that you can overuse slow-mo and i'm sure that we'll find like the perfect balance but you can see that for the majority of this film the only parts that we really use for slow-mo are the ones of the bride and the groom and a few of like the bridal party and stuff like that. But for the most part, it's all 24 frames per second. So I think that having some slow-mo dancing hey guys, shots in cheers. here works. I think it ends up looking cool. The light for these, you know, is pretty, I think it's cool. You know, you can see that my light is here giving them this backlight and then they got the orange lights on them. So we have a little bit of mixed color going on here, but I think that that totally is fine. And I think that it totally works. Um, 6300 so back to the 6300 again part and i mean i'm shooting at f4 because that's as wide as it goes and it honestly it's pretty dark so i was probably at like 6400 iso or somewhere around there um but that's you just gotta do what you gotta do to get the shot and again i don't want it to be super bright i just need to have good looking like it needs to look realistic and i think that it does back to the c100 c100 uh, let's look at this. Okay, so what do we do to this? So here's straight out of camera. Here's with the LUT. Did I do anything to it? No. Could I have cooled it down a little bit? Probably. Kind of mess around here and like find a... I, I mean, I could go for that. Like that kind of a look as opposed to this. But it, I mean, it was warm. Like the light looked warm in there and it was like a very warm sort of vibe. So maybe I could have cooled it down a smidge. And it would have looked better, but... Yeah, you know, whatever. If we look at my scopes. Again, we're a little I mean underexposed isn't the right word. We're on the darker side, but we don't have we're not clipping in our blacks or anything. I think it looks good. Try and get a variety of people, a variety of different types of shots. Hatching with this. So then we go back to, so also the cool thing about going back and forth between slow-mo and regular is that when you go from slow-mo to regular, it makes the regular feel that much more like upbeat and like high paced. So you can kind of do this like back and forth little dance. So I kind of like it. So we went from there to a couple quick 6,300 shots. These are all 4K. Again, just slight motion. So you can see in all these shots, I'm always moving and I'm always, I have, I have one person who's my focus. So like, you know, in this shot, the these this couple here is the focus and i'm moving around them in this shot this guy is the focus so my camera is always pointed towards him no matter where i'm moving my body my camera is always focused in the same spot here i'm just slightly moving just past those girls again always just adding a slight amount of motion is why i love using the gimbal for my receptions as opposed to doing handheld or anything like that or even monopod shots i just like being able to have the variety between the two but i just love adding a subtle slight motion you don't have to be running around like crazy with the gimbal to get cool shots here i'm using this woman as like a 
to sell the motion even more. So I'm not moving very fast, but it looks like I'm, it looks like the motion is a lot more than it really is just because of using her. I like doing that kind of thing. Got to get the groom in there. All right, so here we go. So now let's look at the sparkler exit. So for this, we did a fake sparkler exit because we're our eight hours was up, but they really wanted the exit documented. So we um, we had them do a fake one with like a bridal party and a few friends and stuff. And then they went back in and they kept dancing and we left and went back to the hotel and they kept you know having a good time. So we actually were able to do this multiple times. I think we did it three times which is an advantage of doing the fake sparkler exit. So the first time I followed them from behind, uh, the second time, and then, I don't know if this is the second or third time or whatever, but so again, I, sometimes I just want this to go fast. I'm honestly, I mean, we're at 7.39, six to eight minute film. We're well within our, our range. I had a lot more shots I could have used for the sparkler exit, but it doesn't, you get the gist. So here's from behind. I love that you can see the buildings and it's sort of like a, moonlit night keeping framing in mind let's look at our coloring so we had to cool this down quite a bit it was a little warm um, but this looks good here's a cool shot again there's a little bit of motion like i'm starting and i'm coming up and then we jump to a tighter shot and then we're backing out and then the music fades out i always have the like cheering in the background of everybody who you know the people who are cheering right this is just straight out of the 6300 nothing fancy it's just enough in the background it's pretty low you can see that it's like um if i go to my audio over here it's negative 15 so it's like lower down and then it just fades out whenever that my our end card comes in you know you can hear the last like woo as the music fades out and then that's it so there you guys have it that is kate and kevin's uh feature wedding film like i said we finished right around seven minutes and 40 seconds for that and yeah i'm just like i'm really proud of this i think that it looks really good i think that um the lut works really really well with our footage i'm really starting to kind of figure out the best way to get really good color out of the c100s um how to use that c100 mark ii the slow motion uh combining that with the 6300 and having that new lens on the 6300 makes a huge huge difference i'm able to get such a nice variety of shots with a 6300 that I wasn't able to get before um, and the quality is just so much better it's just so much sharper and the colors are so much truer um, and you saw some instances there where I was matching my 6300 Sony footage to my Canon footage and able to make that work and all that sort of stuff so uh, yeah so there you go I'm really proud of this film I think it turned out really really great and we love shooting in Chicago Chicago was absolutely amazing we do love destination weddings um, they can be kind of hard uh, it's a, it takes a lot of thought and planning to get all of our stuff there and to get it around safely on the trolleys and all that kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, it ends up being totally, totally worth it. So if you watched all the way to the end of this video, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. You guys are the real MVP. If you made it this far, give the video a like. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. If you haven't seen the rest, this is I've done a bunch of these other Breaking Down the Wedding films. This isn't the first one. So if you like this and you want to see more, make sure you go back. It's in the playlist um, linked down here below so that you can go watch the rest of them uh, where I go in depth into some other ones. Some of the other ones are highlights or um, sneak peek films. Some of them are feature length films, but there's always little nuggets of information to be found in all of these videos. So that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. This has been Todd from The Herontans and I'll see you in the next one.